All right. Hey guys, welcome back to the Emlyn in the Mix podcast, season two, episode 40. I'm back. We're back. We're all back in this together. If you've listened to this podcast on a regular basis, you know what it's about. Audio technology, music technology. If you're watching on the YouTubes, you can see right in front of me, we're about to talk about something which we spoke about last week, which was a leak which is very exciting that it actually came into fruition. And we leaked the bombshell here on Emlyn in the Mix, of course, coming from musictech.net. But that was awesome information to actually get accurate. And that, of course, is we're going to be talking about the SP404 MK2 right now. But before we do, obviously, I want to do my little introduction formalities. Thank you for joining me if you're a regular listener. And for those of you who are new to this podcast or if this is your first time listening to the podcast or watching this video. What is it about? Well, we're literally just going to discuss all the cool new audio technology software and hardware that's come out in the last week. And this last week has been insane. I actually had to cull some products from this podcast, which I'll save for next week. Hopefully, we can get to them. But as we get towards the end of the year, it, of course, is now starting to go crazy with product announcements. Like, we're just seeing software, hardware, everything thing as these companies audio technology music technology companies and music gear push to get their products out for the end of the year so it's going to be very busy the next few weeks on this podcast so if this is your first time or you are a regular listener make sure you're subscribed to the youtube channel emlyn in the mix as well to be notified when all of these new exciting product announcements drop i try to cover them here but let's get stuck straight into it enough of me rambling on you're going to hear lots of that on this podcast anyway if you listen to this you're probably used to it but let's talk about the sp404 mk2 now this has had a lot of coverage already on the interwebs and rightly so this thing looks really exciting in fact i'm probably going to get one because it just it's a good price range and you know there's from what i can see there's only sort of some new sort of features that it can do in terms of not from the upgrade but in terms of comparing it with other beat making machines but I just like the fact that it's kind of small, it's robust. I wish it was battery powered. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think it's battery powered. I wish it was battery powered. It has some cool little nifty little features like the DJ mode and that sort of thing. But anyway, let's have a look at it here. It did drop and we had it right here on Emlyn Mix. I'm so happy about that. So... This is comparing to the older model SP404 from Roland. It's bigger, better, faster, and stronger. The SP404 MK2 has everything people love about its predecessor with some serious upgrades like 17 ultra expressive pads and updated knobs for smooth hands-on control. And beat making is even quicker and speedier with a quicker, speedier boot time, swift project loading and sample import, and easy project access via 16 gigabyte of internal storage. Long time users and new beat makers alike will feel right at home with the intuitive layer and classic SPFX, plus a revamp sampling and sequencing workflow. Skip back sample for quick performance capture DJ mode to mix beats live and more. Now, as I said at the start of this podcast, there are quite a lot of videos already covering the SP404 MK2. I've checked out a few and it's worth if you want to learn a little bit more about it because we're only just going to skim across the details of this thing here on the podcast. But if you want to check out Deep Dive a little bit more into it, just go on YouTube and check it out. There's a bunch of videos already up. But uh, yeah, this thing looks super Dope. Gorilla beat making people who make music with SP samplers love the rapid workflow, portability, and tactile approach they offer. The SP404 MK2 takes this experience even further, retaining the lightweight yet rugged design and adding features that make it even easier to create in any scenario. Bang out beats anywhere with AA or more battery powered. How did I not know that before? <laughs> this podcast i apologize capture audio from a stream direct to your mobile device via usb or collaborative collaborate with a partner using the dual headphone output and mic guitar input now can i just say that before i do these podcasts there is so much information thrown my way and in fact that tiny minuscule but it's not a minuscule piece of information very important piece of information i missed and i apologize but this thing is battery powered double a batteries that 
beautiful mind blown right there on the podcast my mind is blown and very happy to hear that it is battery powered as well double a's should it be double a's in 2021 probably not lithium ion battery would be much better technology in this day and age but whatever it is battery powered which makes it portable and i'm super happy about that now If you are an SP user from the past, so you're one of these rolling SP users, you're going to absolutely adore this upgrade. Now, you could have the argument that, oh, I can make this in my door. You know, I can do this quicker in my door. And yeah, even I had those thoughts when I saw this thing. I was watching the demo. Actually, there is a demo from Roland. Actually, you should check that out after this podcast, of course. And I was watching the guy, you know, create, craft a little beat. And then I'm like, wow, he's doing so many things that I could just do in Ableton in two seconds. But I don't think that's the point of these beat making machines which have gained notorious well don't know if notorious is right it's gained massive popularity this last year in 2021 seems like portable beat machines are all the rage in this day and age and i'm a poet and i didn't know it but (laughs) i don't know where i'm going now i'm digressing totally off track but i guess the point of it is it's not that yeah, yeah, you can make it in your door. You can do this in your own little studio quicker than this portable beat machine can do. I think the point of this is you, you know, being able to travel. It's a rugged little sampler. You don't have the lap, you know, little gentle laptop that could break. Oh, well, not that they'll break, but do you know what I mean? It's this the portability portability factor. You've got all your options there, and you can create any sort of beat with that. And I think that's what makes these beat machines exciting. Is it a Machine Plus killer? I know we've covered the Machine Plus on this channel multiple times. I don't think it's in... I mean, it is a beat machine. Maybe there's some features that do improve upon the Machine Plus, especially the battery-powered thing. uh, That really excites me. But, you know, Machine Plus is its own kettle of fish. It has its own sort of sequencing workflow, which is really brilliant. And I don't think the SP404 MK2 could overtake that. But this has its own niche market as well. Now, sampler with Soul. So the SP404 MK2's Vivid OLED screen, I didn't mention that actually, they updated the screen, it's now OLED, which is just a better technology for viewing your screen, and zoomable waveform view sampling editing is smooth like butter, chop up samples by tapping out edit points in real time, or use auto chop to slice samples automatically, then finesse them with envelope pitch shift, and use the new resampling workflow to re-record patterns and effects layers for detailed sound design. And with skip back sampling, you can instantly grab those golden moments by capturing up to 25 seconds of audio from your last performance. Yes. So look, this is a pretty exciting machine. I'm not going to read all of it here from the website. Let's just have a quick listen to some nice, dusty SP404 MK2 sample, creative sampling. Here we go. have it folks some nice lo-fi beats for you all done on the sp404 mk2 if you like noodling around making beats chopping slicing even with that dj mode you can have a lot of fun it's gonna let this beat roll out a bit here all right we're gonna stop it there super nice i love these demos too by the way they're very nice head over to roland.com i'm wearing my roland jumper today i wore my roland hat last week i'm totally representing roland no kickback whatsoever uh roland reach out if you want to give me an sp404 mk2 we'll feature it on the channel (laughs) anyway let's move along to our next piece of news boom for me getting this right 
boom well i mean it wasn't me but boom for us getting a leak a correct leak on emlyn mix i'm so happy about that All right, let's move along to our next piece of news this one comes to us from slate digital and yes we are on youtube funnily enough looking at youtube listening to a podcast wow for producers one mystery plugin what is going on slate what is going on we spoke about you only last week i believe or the week before with metatune brand new plugin now they got a new one coming well what is it? Let's have a listen to some of these producers here. Kato Producer up first. Yo, what's up? My name's Kato on the track. What's good? It's Lario. Yo, this is RMC Beats. Yo, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Slim, a.k.a. Mr. Different. I'm over here at Slave Digital Studios checking out a brand new plugin. I feel like I could play with this for, for like hours on one sound. Oh my God. Wow, I just like flipped it into a whole nother vibe. And this plugin's dope. I like that. It's too easy. You're gonna make a lot of producers make some hits now with this. It's just so easy to work it. I can't wait till it comes out. I'm gonna use it on a lot of tracks, actually. I mean, that sounds crazy already. You could be knocking beats out left and right. I could be on a plugin like this all day long. I've never worked in a plugin that does all of that at once. I can see myself using it in my workflow, like on every beat, really. Everything's within the plugin. You can pretty much do anything. I don't know, man. This plugin's crazy. I want it. I, I need it. I'm not leaving without it. There you go. All access pass from Slate Digital. Wow, Slate. I'm actually use this plugin. <laughs> I'm not just saying that. He's not just, just saying that. that. He's not up. making that up. Slate Digital bringing bringing the hype. I thought I'd just mention it here on the podcast because we're probably going to be talking about this plugin next week, whatever it is. Part of the All Access Pass from Slate Digital. Check it out. Follow them on YouTube or whatever if you want to find out what that mystery plugin is. Those producers seem to be having a lot of fun with it and they're being legit about it. All right, next piece of news here comes to us from Isotope. RX9. It sort of dropped in the background without any fanfare. Now, RX9, what is that, you might be asking? Well, this is for my audio sound engineer, even soundies who do audio for Netflix. I don't know, movies, music, even music producers love this plugin. RX9 is a post-production engineer's dream. You can quickly and reliably deliver clean audio using the RX9. So with version 9, you might be asking, what is new? Because I personally, I have RX8. I absolutely freaking love RX8 and it it does the best job removing unwanted sounds. You can even create vocal tracks, acapellas. If you can't find an acapella on the internet, you literally just pull up RX-8 and you can strip all the instruments out and just have the vocals. And it's really, really good. Check out Emlyn in the Mix on YouTube. Yes, that's me. Self-plug here. I did, I did an overview of RX-8. Go check that out on my channel if you want to see what that's all about. But what is, what's new in RX-9? So they've added new features and functionality to address some of the most common repair problems that exist in today's post-production and making it the definitive choice of audio post-production. And I would agree with that statement. It certainly is the definitive choice. Surgically noise removal. Use a variety of selection of tools to tame, replace, or completely remove any unwanted noise. Work in the door or the app. RX comes with a versatile set of plugins and app modules to deal with hum, clipping, noise, and much more. Intelligent processing with machine learning and assistive technology, RX can listen to your audio and instantly offer suggestions to fix or improve it. So, now, you might be thinking, if you if you are an RX-8 user or you're one of the previous RX users and you're already happy with this, why upgrade to RX-9? Well, here's some audio samples here for you. I'm going to play this back for you because I thought this was a very good example of the difference between, and especially between RX-8 and RX-9 because I was like, mm, I don't need to upgrade, but have a listen to this. So here we've got some original audio of some dialogue. There has been nothing has been changed. It's all the same. It's war, it's fighting, there is no security, no guarantee to go from one place to another. All right, so here's with RX-8. There has been nothing has been changed. Remove the sound. It's all the same. It's war, it's fighting, there is no security, no guarantee to go from one place to another. So you can hear his voice is isolated from the ambience in the background. Now, let's listen to the difference with RX-9. There has been nothing has been changed. It's all the same. It's war, it's fighting, there is no security, no guarantee to go from one place to another. Yeah, that 
That is super tight. The diff- even the difference between RX-8 and RX-9, super tight. Have a listen back. If you don't believe me, listen back on this podcast and turn it up. Have headphones on if you want to hear that because that that's impressive. All right, let's have a listen to the uh, D-Hum in RX-9. So I'm going to take you through the steps of how to remove this background noise from the air conditioning unit. All right, so you got the D-Hum here. So I'm going to take you through the steps of how to remove this background noise from the air conditioning unit. Yep, you can hear that there. And this one here brings, uh, this is pretty interesting. So this is actually removing the voice and just having the ambience. Have a listen to this. So here's the original. Um, so as they get like a little closer and a little closer together, the line kind of blurs between where the permit starts and where it doesn't. So the dialogue is going to be removed here. I'm just going to turn it up on mine because I want to be able to hear this. And now we're only going to hear the ambient. So this is RX-8 ambience. So no dialogue. And then check out RX-9. This is really good. All right, hopefully you can hear that there on the podcast. So I'll make sure it's boosted so you can hear that. But you get the idea. So that's essentially just getting the ambience. And it's it's really tight. Like you can hear the birds in the RX-9 version. You can actually hear the birds a bit more isolated. And it's good for post-production, obviously. If you need ambience to use on a track, you want to take it from something else, this allows you to do it. RX-9 is the surgical tool for audio engineers. It is the dream tool for them to be able to capture what they like. So RX-9 draw and it dropped pretty quietly i didn't even really i don't even know how i found about out about it actually just <laughs> came up in my feed and now we're showing it on the podcast i'm very happy that we did get to get this on the podcast all right let's move along to our next piece of gear here so this comes to us from waves they're dropping version 13 of their waves plugins now you might be thinking well they only just dropped version 12 not that long ago well it was last year now And what's new about version 13? Well, of course, of course, it's supporting Apple M1. And that is the big thing at the moment is getting the software to work over on those M1 chips because from what we've heard on all accounts, the Apple M1 chip is off the chain for fast processing power and it's going to be a musician producer's dream once we get all the software, everything integrated over to the Apple M1 chip. This is really exciting. And of course, also Windows 11's dropped recently and there's compatibility with Windows 11 as well. You've got some HIDPI, high definition dot graphic pixels. Sorry, <laughs> I tried to remember what that was. HIDPI graphics for select plugins. It just more or less means that you got a high definition uh, picture of those plugins, but it's only for select plugins, Chemney, uh, sorry, Sheps, Omni Channel, Abbey Road, RS124, and Kaleidoscopes. Now with ultra sharp HIDPI GUIs and the additional improvements, ongoing improvements, bug fixes, that sort of thing, additional fixes. Do you need to upgrade? Well, I mean, if you're if you're going to go into the whole Apple M1, Windows 11 area then yes this is essentially for you for those of you who don't use wave plugins i wouldn't worry about it right now if your system is working fine then you don't need to the only reason i guess waves is getting to mention here is they're just see they're you know they're the bread and butter for years they've been the bread and butter they may be slipping a bit these days as there's more and more exciting music and audio technology software rising up but Waves is still up there as a bread and butter. I know I personally, I use this for work and it still does the job and they sound incredible and they just keep releasing more and more products. They just have so many, they just have a plethora of products. In fact, they just got so many. Anyway, version 13 is here. If you have already upgraded your computers or you want to get native on those M1 chips or Windows 11 compatibility, then this is for you. All right, next is from Output for the arcade and it is introducing lead not a lot of information here melody rain supreme make yours stand out with these layered monophonic leads and catchy gliding top lines riff solos and unforgettable hooks come easy with imaginative sound for every mood let's just have a listen to lead what is lead here we go let's have a quick listen to this
nice sounding leads actually all part of the arcade by output and it's there's a new version out now up uh arcade is up to version 2.0 and that lead sounds really nice sounds really exciting we haven't actually talked about or featured output here on the podcast before but there you go shout outs to output and the new lead synth plugin for arcade all right this next one wow this is super exciting this is the tokyo strings scoring strings from impact soundworks let me just read a little bit about this here for you yes we are on youtube again so welcome to tokyo scoring strings the upcoming flagship orchestral string library from impact soundworks for the first time ever you'll be able to use the same beautiful string sounds heard in countless classic japanese video games anime and film scores in your door all captured with stunning depth, fidelity, and consistency across five string sections, violins, viola, cello, and bass. Tokyo Scoring Strings features the world's renowned, I'm going to say this, hopefully I can say this right, Kochiro Maruyo Strings from Final Fantasy VII Remake and My Hero Academia. <laughs> the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Attack on Titan, Octopath Traveler, and hundreds more as recorded by japan's most in-demand recording engineer mitsu ori azawa <laughs> sorry i probably butchered that one as well in the legendary sound city studio in tokyo so along with these amazing partners we worked with award-winning composer masuro yokoyama and his company and his company's plug notes and oversee the entire they oversaw the entire process and create the finest possible results. Anyway, I'm gonna stop butchering Japanese names. Let's have a quick listen to this. You're gonna if you're a strings composer, even if you're not, let's say you love anime or you have a nostalgic fondness for computer games, you want this sound in your door, Impact Soundworks is delivering the goods. Let's have a listen here. There you go, there's a list there if you're watching on YouTube, all the games. Wow. This is huge. This collaboration is actually huge. If you wanted that sound, now you're going to be able to get it from Impact Soundworks. Shout out to Impact Soundworks. What? That is just, that's very, very impressive. All right. Well, let's move along to our next piece of news here. It comes to us from Native Instruments. And Native Instruments have just dropped a bomb with a new instrument here. Native Instruments. Wow. Inspiring acoustic sequencer. Now, what is this exactly? So, quickly create looping melodies, dynamic pads, and rhythmic patterns. Draw from a rich palette of sounds that can be tailored with creative editing controls, of course. And it's developed in collaboration with innovative instrument designer Studio Orchestral Tools. So orchestral tools are behind this one. And let's have a quick listen to Sequest in action. We've got some audio demos here.
All right, there you go. A lot of movement, a lot of organic sounds there. So Sequis, Sequis combines a deep library of meticulously recorded samples with an intuitive sequence engine, uniting rhythm and melody to infuse your productions with richly organic pulsing momentum. Whether you're scoring otherworldly sci-fi films or crafting deep, dark dance floor moments, Sequis gives you total freedom to explore new sonic pastures. So the sounds for Sequis were captured from a huge range of instruments with high-end mics, preamps, EQs, and composers. Yes, we know these companies. They're going out of their way. And you heard there in that, that audio demo there just how rich and beautiful the sounds are. Yes, we are spoiled as audio producers. We are so spoiled as music producers in this day and age just with what we have at the tools at our hands. Like It's insane. And it's great that these companies like impact soundworks we showed you the tokyo scoring strings just before and native instruments going out of their way to record meticulously record these instruments and get them at their highest fidelity so that we can just play it across our keyboards you know very cool indeed we're gonna have to keep moving on so much news to get through today but we're nearly at our feature product here but i just want to give a shout out to that new instrument there sequence check it out if you like that sound and you want to do scoring or you want to add it you could add it to any genre you just got to be creative all right so next piece of news ik multimedia making the cut of course but they have a new product and it's not the group buy right now but i'm going to mention the group buy because i want to give you an update on that but ik multimedia announces the t-rax tascam tape collection what is it so RK Multimedia is pleased to announce the T-Rex Tascam Tape Collection, a collection of AAX, VST and AU plugins for mixing and mastering. The new T-Rex Tascam Tape Collection draws upon the strengths of four meticulously restored Tascam analog recording systems, long recognized for their glorious tone and other audible hallmarks. Developed with IK IK's award-winning modeling technology and in direct collaboration with Tascam themselves, the result of this coordination, coordinated effort allows musicians to introduce the warmth and classic characteristics of some of the finest analog recorders into today's digital recordings, ultimately delivering the best of both worlds. So officially certified models. So these are the models you get included with this. The Tascam tape collection offers four iconic analog tape machines. The TAC A6 6100 MK2, an upgraded version of the original mastering recorded, first released in 1973 and still much sought after today for adding tape warmth and color to recordings. The TAC A3340 s released in the early 70s is the deck behind many famous song demos and even more albums made by some of the most influential rock bands ever and Tascam 388 sorry 388 released in 1985 combines an 8 channel mixing console and an 8 track tape machine in one hugely successful and still fetching high prices today i have to check that out 388 is revered or 388 is revered for its warm and evocative sound and the, ta the cassette tape-based Tascam Porter 1 Mini Studio from 1984 was Tascam's best-selling Porter Studio, introducing thousands of musicians to the joy of home recording. Even today, the Porter 1 remains popular for creating lo-fi sounds, creative experiments, and even live performance. So there you go. If you like tape emulation, you like the, that warm analog sound that tape emulation is going to bring you, this is available in software form from our I IK Multimedia, our friends at IK Multimedia, of course. And how's that group buy going, Emlyn? Well, thank you for asking. We only mentioned this in the podcast for the last nearly two months now, I believe. But why not? Because they're only going to celebrate their 25th birthday once, right? If there's any other software companies out there celebrating a birthday, hit me up, Emlyn in the mix at gmail.com. We'll celebrate together. But this is a big one 25 years from IK Multimedia. That is huge. It is 2021, which means they started in 1996. Very impressive. And I believe it was software. Please don't quote me on that. But IK Multimedia, what did you release in 1996? I'm very curious to know. Maybe we can talk about that on a future podcast. But how are they celebrating their 25th anniversary? Of course, it is the group buy. And we've only mentioned this every week, as I said previously. But right now, this is such an amazing deal. 
you basically get 24 products for the price of one. They're going to reach the final tier. We know it. There's only 486 participants to go before we essentially go to the final tier, which essentially means you get 25 products for the price of one. Some of the products here are awesome. I believe that the Tascam tape emulation we just spoke about may be a part of, it, part of that. Don't quote me on that either. I could be completely wrong. Anyway, group buy is still happening from IK Multimedia. There's your update, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's get to our feature product. Yay. And our feature today comes to us from my friend or our friends, we should say, everyone's friends, Cherry Audio. And this thing that we're about to speak about, and I shouldn't call it a thing, but it is, of course, it's an analog emulation of a classic. It is the Mercury 4, as they're calling it, from Cherry Audio. And I'm so excited to show you this, guys. We have a hands-on demo. If you were watching on YouTube, you might have seen me checking the recording before, and you might have seen what we're about to talk about, but it is in the title, of course, Mercury 4. What is the Mercury 4? Well, 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 well. The Mercury 4 is a detailed emulation of one of the best sounding and quickest polyphonic synthesizers of the late 1970s, quirkiest, sorry, the Roland Jupiter 4. And it's the rarest and most sonically unique of the Fable Jupiter series. <clears throat> so Cherry Audio have gone to the treat to great lengths to recreate the subtle and not so subtle nuances and character of this beloved classic. Every aspect of the Mercury 4 has been expertly modeled upon a vintage Jupiter 4, originally owned by Greg Hawks. Now, we did mention this on the podcast a couple of podcasts ago, but I will go over this again. It's very interesting. They took Greg Hawks. He is of the legendary 1980s new wave band, The Cars. They had a couple of hits and played on their double platinum 1981 album, Shake It Up. And in Greg's word, Mercury 4 sounds just like my old Jupiter. It's nice to have it back. So the Jupiter 4 had its share of disadvantages, including limited patch storage, just four voices of polyphony, and boat anchor weight. Wow, it must have been very heavy. Cherry, Audio, Mer Cherry Audio's Mercury 4 improves upon the original design by offering 16 voice polyphony, infinite patch storage, velocity sensitivity, MPE support. That's huge. I'm happy about that. And much more. MPE being MIDI polyphonic expression. And we've even paired it with a fantastic model of the classic Roland Space Echo and tape delay. Wait until you see this thing. I'm going to show you in a sec. Very exciting indeed. Let me just read a little bit of the history here for you because we're going to play it back for you, of course. So, originally released in 1978, the Roland Jupiter 4 synthesizer was one of the earliest instruments to combine voice assigned polyphony with digital patch storage. That is the ability to store and recall sound to a digital memory and recall them at the touch of a button. And the Jupiter 4 rapidly became the go-to polysynth for numerous English and European acts in the 80s, including Duran Duran, Thomas Dolby, The Human League, Simple Minds and more. So, all of that sort of sound you would have heard is the Jupiter 4 and for good reason the Jupiter 4 sounded fantastic with a raw raunchy tone not found in any of the other beloved Juno and Jupiter since its analog oscillators have a uniquely aggressive tone quality and the built-in sub oscillator adds girth its oddly fast and deep LFO modulation capabilities allow it to create uniquely whacked out modular synth-like tones and Roland's famous stereo chorus ensemble circuit is beautifully implemented, adding a boatload of width and dimensions. And Mercury 4's lovingly recreates Jupiter 4's bold and unusual analog oscillators, powerful dual filter, and easily overdrivable VCA section. And Cherry Auto says, they go on to say, they went to great lengths, perfectly recreate, replicate the unique arpeggiator section, heard on tons of classic new wave tracks, as well as the original two massive unison modes. They've added a drift knob to dial in just the right amount of vintage character. The renowned stereo BBD ensemble effect has been beautifully modeled. And they've also added a truly otherworldly space echo style tape echo with multiple reverb modes. The tape echo perfectly recreates the warm tonality and subtle speed variation that makes the original space echo unit so damn desirable. Mercury 4 is packed with 400 killer presets, including the Jupiter's 4 legendary front panel, factory presets, and 75 presets from the acclaimed sound designer, Huston Singletary. There you go, guys. That is the overview there. I know that was a mouthful. 
I got through it though. Thank you so much for sticking around and listen. But let's jump across to the actual synthesizer right now. And here you can see nice big GUI on the screen. I've got the first preset up, of course. And just have a listen to how authentic and unique sounding this is. As a polysynth, it's probably one of the best software emulations on the market right now. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So got a bit of a hoovery sort of preset there, aggressive unison as they're calling it. We'll just go through a bunch of presets. You can make up your own mind on how good this sounds. <laughs> Get some of that classic 80s lead sounds. It's all here. Just how, actually how cool if you think about this, how cool is it that you have this in software form? You essentially have the, the dude from the cars, you have his synthesizer in your door. I mean, isn't that a mind blow in itself? Like... <laughs> it just sounds really good. Like, we can dial in, of course, we have reverb, we can dial in the decay. really dial that in. Of course, you can change your mode selector here, give it different styles of tape echo delay. You can sync it to your host. It's all here. Of course, you've got your envelope, attack. Whoa! <laughs> I put the repeat rate up too much. Trippy. Yeah, it's got that trippy space echo intensity going on. And you're going to get all that real trippy nuances and... And you can play with the echo, of course, uh, with the decay. Let's keep going through some presets here. Nice sort of square sound. And you got a pegiation, of course, with a bit of movement. You got a lovely portamento here to get that sliding effect. I don't know how it would work on the arpeggiator. No, I might not work on this sound. Let's get a bit more of a leady. There's a nice drone there, actually. Go back to that one. Ooh, slow, slow attack. That's pretty cool. Let me get a lead here. Here we go. Let's, I'll show that portamento again. Turn it up there. So you can get that really cool slide effect as well with a nice portamento. Most synths have that portamento, but it just sounds really good. It sounds really authentic. If you've ever played with an analog synthesizer, you know how important that sound is. I just got slight portamento there, just giving it a slight slide. Yeah, some beautiful sounds indeed. I mean, we're not going to be able to go through all the presets. 400 presets, as I mentioned. But I think the point of this, me just noodling around right now, is just to give you an idea of how authentic this thing sounds, you know? Look, I'm not the best keyboardist on earth, but I'm good enough to give you a demo of the sound. And that's what you came here for, right? <laughs> I like doing these minor chords, excuse me for doing minor chords. I just love them. I'm getting some interesting combinations. You got some nice basses there. Analog kick. Strings. Play with the modulation wheel, they get some interesting effects, but look, in all honesty, that is one of the finest analog emulations I've heard this year. This could almost 
be my synth of the year. Like, I'm not joking. This thing sounds so authentic, so real. We haven't even looked at barely any of the features. I'll try and go over, so, over some really quickly for you here. But of course, you can change the GUI size. You can change the oversampling. You got a MIDI panic button up here as well. You got focus, which will take you directly to all of the parameters here that you want to get to your envelope, your VCA, VCF. You got your noise on, off. Of course, change your waveform, change the octave, the range, modulation here, your LFO more or less, which is getting fed into the oscillator. Like if you wanted to learn about synthesis, these old school synthesizers make it really easy to sort of understand where the sound has been routed, how it's been moving. You know, you got this arpeggiator here, like how could you not enjoy? Probably not the right sound for an arpeggiator, but... <laughs> Unison mode, mono, poly, tuning, that drift thing they're talking about, which will give you all the trippy nuances. <laughs> and just the fact that it has that tape echo and reverb on here, as you can see on the screen, that's just so freaking cool. I'm going to do a way more detailed video or a a more detailed overview video of this on the YouTube channel. So if you haven't subscribed to Emlyn in the Mix, make sure to do so right now. Thank you so much for joining me though on the podcast. If you've been listening on the podcast, thank you so much for listening there. I really appreciate it, guys. I would love a review if you haven't done so already. I've been receiving reviews, but I, I would love more reviews if you're loving this podcast. Five stars, four stars. I actually know how to do it now. I looked it up for you guys. You literally, if you go on the podcast app, if you have the podcast app on your iPhone or on your smartphone and you scroll, we go to the page where Emlyn in the mix is, scroll to the bottom. You can actually leave a review. I would love to get a review from you guys. One star, four star, two stars, five stars. You can only go up to five stars. You know what it's worth, guys. Love your feedback. If you want to reach out to me, you can. Emlyn in the mix at gmail.com. Super simple to reach out to me as well. Drop into my DMs there. If you want a shout out, you want me to check out a product that you perhaps love and I've never checked out on this podcast before, or you're a music gear dev or software dev and you just want to get your product shown or heard about, you can do that. You can reach out to Emlyn in the mix to get your information spread on whatever it is that you've created and as long as it's in that realm i'm going to cover it here on the podcast anyway i think i've rambled enough for you guys i love this plugin it's freaking awesome i'm going to keep playing with it but definitely subscribe to the youtube channel because we'll do a more in-depth video of it all right guys thank you so much for joining me this week on the podcast we'll be back next week with episode 41 wow it was episode 40 today i didn't even mention that season two <laughs> Episode 40. Too much to talk about. All right, guys. Peace out. Boom.